The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Of course. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 49, American. Year after year, at market after market, independent tobacco experts present at the auctions can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. Ripe, rich tobacco, fine Lucky Strike tobacco. That means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. Profit by the experience of tobacco experts. Remember, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, since this is our first program of the new year, I'd like to bring you a man who has made two important resolutions. The first resolution was to give every member of his cast a raise. The second resolution was to forget the first one. <laughs> and here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, Don, I thought that was a very unfunny introduction. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I happen to think it was very funny. Well, I don't care what you think. <laughs> you know, you may not know this, Don, but you can get brand new, shiny 1946 announcers without waiting for Detroit to make up its mind. <laughs> You know, I wouldn't mind having a thin announcer for a change. I'm getting pretty sick of looking at a pot that big without flowers in it. <laughs> so just... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Happy New Year, Don. Well, same to you, Mary. Hey, what about me? Aren't you going to thank me for the swell time I showed you New Year's Eve at that nightclub? Yeah, but next time, let's not go home at 11.30. <laughs> now, Mary, you know very well that we didn't get home till daybreak. Boy, was I raring. <laughs> you should have seen him, Don. Jack drank one bottle of Coca-Cola, jumped up on the chandelier, beat his chest, and yelled, Look at me, I'm Tarzan. <laughs> yes, sir. And he fooled everybody if he hadn't opened his shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, how about that Tarzan yell I gave? That wasn't a Tarzan yell. You sat on a hot light bulb. <laughs> now, Mary. And then he drank another bottle of Coca-Cola without a chaser yet. Guy can have a little fun, can't he? Anyway, I was the life of the party. You were nothing but a big show-off. I was not a show-off. Then why did you ask the waiter to throw you out? <laughs> I just did that for a gag. Now, Mary, you know very well we had a marvelous dime. We danced all evening. Okay, I had a marvelous time. You're darn tootin'. <laughs> Say, Mary, is Jack a good dancer? I don't know. It's the first time I ever did the minuet. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? You've done the minuet before. Yeah, but not while the band was playing Cow Cow Boogie. <laughs> Mary, now, on New Year's Eve, you gotta let yourself go. You Say, know. Jack, what'd you do at the stroke of 12? What did he do? He said, Happy New Year, took an aspirin, and passed out. <laughs> Well, I wasn't out long, sister. <laughs> and Don, when I came to, I went around and kissed every woman in the place. You did? Yeah. And Mary was so jealous, she tried to stop me. I wasn't jealous. I was only trying to tell you the place was closed and those women were mopping up. <laughs> hmm. I was wondering why they, why they all wore upsweep hairdos. <laughs> Anyway, let's forget about me. How about you, Don? Did you have a good time New Year's Eve? Oh, I sure did, Jack. At the stroke of 12, I crawled out of the fireplace and filled all the stockings with toys. Fill the stockings with toys? On New Year's Eve? Don, you, 
You were seven days late. I know. I was stuck in the chimney. <laughs> See, well, that's terrible. You could have fallen down and hurt yourself. Yes, but I was lucky enough to catch the flu. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you... You, uh... You what? I was in the chimney, but I was lucky enough to catch the flu. <laughs> Don, uh... Don, I, uh, I have an arrangement with Abbott and Costello. We leave them alone, and they leave us alone. <laughs> so, let's, so let's try it. Well, happy... Hello, Larry. Happy New Year. The same to you, Jack. Did you, Jack? Why, Larry, what's come over you? You've always called me Mr. Benny. Well, don't you remember? On New Year's Eve, you said I could stop calling you Mr. Benny and call you Jack. When did I tell you that? Right after your second Coke. <laughs> you mean before the aspirin tablet? <laughs> well, Larry, I still like the idea of you calling me Mr. Benny. I mean, it adds a little dignity to the program and shows you have respect for me. Uh, do you want me to call you Mr. Benny, too? No, no, that won't be necessary, Mary. Gee, I can call him Jack. <laughs> and now, folks... Wait till the girls at the May Company hear about this. Now, wait a minute. Don't get smart, Miss Livingston. Oh, do call me Mary. Now, cut that off! <laughs> Come on, Larry, let's have your song. Now, Mary, you behave yourself, will you? It's a grand night for singing The moon is flying high And somewhere a bird who is bound to be heard Is throwing his heart at the sky It's a grand night for singing The stars are bright above the earth is aglow, and to add to the show, I think I am falling in love, falling, falling in love. Maybe it's more than the earth, shiny and silvery blue. Maybe the reason I'm feeling this way has something to do with you. It's a grand night for singing. The moon is flying high. And somewhere a bird who is bound he'll be heard is throwing his heart at the sky. It's a grand night for singing. The stars are bright above. The earth is aglow, and to add to the show, I think I am falling in love. Falling, falling in for singing sung by Larry Stevens. And very good, Larry. By the way, kid, uh, you, uh, you made a record of that song, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, it's a great number. I'd like to have one of those records, Larry. Well, why don't you buy one, Mr. Benny? It only costs 75 cents. Well, I, I thought about buying one, kid, but you see, uh, I just wanted your song, and the record has something else on the other side, you see, so I, I didn't feel like paying for both sides. Maybe they'll slice it for you. <laughs> No, no, I asked them. <laughs> and you, sh 
And you should have heard... Hello, Dodsey. Hi, you, Livy. And a good, good evening to you, Mr. Benny. What? <laughs> Mr. Benny, Phil, what's that? One of my New Year's resolutions. Respect for the boss. I made it on New Year's Eve. Well, that's a nice resolution. They told me I made it, and I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I thought so. Phil, I never saw a guy like you. You keep going to parties, but you never know what happens. You can't even remember if you've had a good time. Jackson, when I get up the next morning, brush my teeth, and the bristles fall out of the toothbrush, I know I had a good time. <laughs> Oh. Hey, look, uh, how about you, Jackson? Did you have fun New Year's Eve? Uh, yes, Phil. I went over to the... Uh, That's all, Jackson. If you can remember, you didn't have fun. <laughs> well, I can't remember all of it. And, Phil, as long as you're making resolutions, you could have made another one. During this new year, why don't you learn something about music? You mean I should be like Stokowski? No, Phil. No. All I ask is... All I ask is when you look at your music stand and see a piece of paper that has lines across it and little black dots all over it, don't turn to your boys and say, there's a spy around here. This stuff is in cold. <laughs> little as they know, it embarrasses them. <laughs> all right, Jackson, all right. That'll be another one of my resolutions. Well, speaking of resolutions, Jack, I made a resolution that during 1946, I'm going to find new ways to tell people about Lucky Strike cigarettes. You are, kiddo? Yes. <laughs> Instead of saying LSMFT stands for Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, I'm going to say it backwards. What? I'm going to say TFMSL stands for tobacco fine means strike lucky. <laughs> but Don, isn't that a bit ridic? <laughs> well, Jack, at least it's different. Remember how I always used to say lucky strikes are so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw? Uh-huh. Well, listen to it this way. Draw the uneasy and free so, packed fully so, firm so, round so. Well, mouth my shut. <laughs> Pack so, firm so, round so. Rinse so. Happy little walk. Now! <laughs> Don, Don, if I were you, I'd forget about doing the commercial backwards. Just do it the regular way. Well, okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will have a number by Phil Harris and his orchestra who will play it not backwards, not forwards, but in their usual manner. They'll start in the middle and blast both ways. <laughs> All right, Phil, let's Oh, have... wait a minute, Jack. <laughs> what is it, Mary? I meant to tell you that the way over here, I stopped off at your house, and while I was there, Fred Allen called. Fred Allen, huh? Well, what did the dead end of Allen's Alley have to say? <laughs> I haven't heard such language since Mama stepped on Papa's bare foot with her track shoes on. <laughs> well, Mary, Allen didn't have to use that kind of language, even if he was talking about me. It wasn't his fault, Jack. He was reading one of those contest letters. No. Oh. He's just jealous because more people hate me than him. <laughs> That's all. What about the contest, Jack? Have the winners been picked yet? Uh, not yet, Don. The judges are reading the letters as fast as they can. But on Sunday, January 27, three weeks from tonight, we'll announce the winners. Three weeks from tonight. It won't be very long until I'll be paying off the prizes. Hey, Jackson, as long as you're paying off, how about that little bet I won from me on the Rose Bowl game? Phil, I didn't see the game, so the bet's off. I mean, how, how do I know that USC lost, huh? Are you kidding? The score was printed in every newspaper in the country. So what? Last Wednesday, I picked up the newspaper on my front lawn and it said no rain today. Paper was so wet, I could hardly read it. <laughs> so don't be too sure about USC losing. Jackson, are you crazy? 90,000 people were at that game and saw Alabama win. I don't care if 100,000 people saw. I'm not taking the word of a lot of strangers. <laughs> That's the way rumors get started. <laughs> I'm not taking anybody's word. That's why Jack went to Europe last summer. He wanted to make sure the war was over. Yeah. He hasn't been to Japan yet, so he's still got his house blacked out. <laughs> Mary, let's drop the whole... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Rochester. Rochester, you know I'm on the air. What did you call for? It's about Nottingham, your new English butler. He must be crazy. What's the matter now? 
When you left the house this morning, did you tell him to take the Christmas tree off the grand piano, cut it up into little pieces and burn it? Yeah, did it fit in the fireplace? Oh, but the keyboard! <laughs> Rochester, do you mean to say that Nottingham damaged my grand piano? Damaged it? Boss, you know in front where it says Steinway and Sons? Yes. Well, the father's in business for himself now. <laughs> oh, my God. Rochester, why didn't you stop him? Stop him? Smop him? He wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> well, my grand piano is ruined. I told you I saved the keyboard. The keyboard? Why would you just save that? Boss, you know how I feel about Ivory. <laughs> I said, oh, no. Well, Rasha, did anything else happen? Not until the fireman got there. The fireman? Yeah, when Nottingham threw the pen in the fireplace, the flames shot up all over the roof. Well, did the fireman put it out? They sure did. I went outside and watched them. They climbed up a ladder, stuck a hose down the chimney, and turned it on full force. Uh-huh. And, boss, I couldn't understand how a chimney could hold so much water till I opened the front door. <laughs> What? That tide hit me so hard I thought Frank Thomas was coaching it. <laughs> Why, don't tell me the house was flooded. Flooded? You know that picture of Whistler's mother you got in the library? Yes. Well, the frame's still there, but she's in the living room diving for pennies. <laughs> Rochester, stop with the jokes. Did you save my parrot? Boss, the last time I saw your parrot, he was sailing down the hall in your derby hat shouting, Mr. Christian, come here! <laughs> oh, don't be so silly. Now, let the water out the back door. We might as well water the garden while we've got it. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Goodbye. What happened, Jack? What, what always happens when I leave the house? Come on, Phil, let's have a band now. <laughs> Played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and hey, gentlemen. Hey, Jackson, come on. How about paying me that dough you owe me on the Rose Bowl game? <laughs> Bill, I told you I didn't see the game. But, Jack, you said you went to the Rose Bowl. How come you didn't see the game? Well. I'll tell you, Don. He wouldn't be interested. Yes, I would. What happened, Mary? Oh. Well, Jack had tickets for the game, and he told Phil and me to meet him in front of Tunnel 16 at 1 30. 1 30, 1 30. that? Well, when Phil and I got to the bowl, Jack wasn't there yet. So we waited and waited. You should have seen the crowd down. There were thousands of people pushing and shoving. Come on, Phil. Let's go in. We can't, Libby. We've got to wait for Jackson. He's got the tickets. Why didn't he come with us? Well, you know how romantic Jack is. He's bringing his girlfriend, Gladys Abisco, to the game. Yeah, she's a pretty cute kid when she's all dressed up. You know, I think Jackson's kind of stuck on that little waitress. Yeah, but he's getting indifferent now that meat rationing is over. <laughs> you know him. Hey, Mary, Mary, look. Here comes Jackson and Gladys now. Gee, Gladys, I never saw you look so nice. You're sure pretty when you get all dialed up. Thanks, Speedy. <laughs> I mean it. Boy, am I lucky I met you. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> That's fate for you. You know, I'd never have met you if I hadn't been hungry that night. Yeah, I'll never forget. I was driving along looking for a place to eat, and I drove right past Ciro's and the Trocadero and the Macambo. 
And it was just fate that made me turn into Simon's drive-in. <laughs> and there, like a vision of loveliness, you came toward me. Gee, you smelled so good. Yeah, it was chicken gumbo night. <laughs> Uh-huh. 25 cents a bowl. A meal in itself. Oh, look, Gladys, there's Mary and Phil. Well, here we are, kids. Gladys, you know Mary, don't you? Sure. Hello, Mary. Hello, Gladys. Gee, that's a pretty fur. Did you trap it yourself? <laughs> I should say not. Speedy ran over it on the way out here. Gladys. Hit it again, Jackson. It's still wiggling. <laughs> Don't be funny. Gladys meant that it slipped off her shoulder and ran over it accidentally. Didn't you, Gladys? You tell him, big boy. You got the lips for it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, kids. Here's our gate. Let's go in. Tickets, tickets. Hold your own stubs, please. Here you are. Oh, hello, Gladys. Hello, Eddie. What's the special tonight? Beef soup and boiled potatoes. <laughs> oh, come on, Gladys. Forget business for a while. Okay, Speedy. Here's tunnel 16 over this way, Jackson. Now, let's stick together. Say, Gladys, you still work at the Shamrock Cafe? No, I'm back at the drive-in. Speedy thought I ought to be outside where it's healthy, yeah. <laughs> Darn right. What's the use of being in California if you can't enjoy the sun? Yeah, but I sure wish I could get off the night shift. <laughs> you will, honey. Just save your tips. That's all. I do, but every time I get a little ahead, you want to go to a movie or something? <laughs> Well, it won't always be that way. Hey, look who's here. Hiya, Gladys. Happy New Year. Same to you, Lefty. Lefty? Hmm, you know everybody, don't you? That's Lefty Flanagan. What a sport. He always orders a la carte. <laughs> don't talk to him. But Lefty's a big tipper. Oh. Hiya, Lefty. <laughs> now, let's see. Where do we... Hey, look, there's a hot dog stand. Let's make with a mustard. Yeah, want a hot dog, Gladys? I'm not hungry right now. You can get me one when we're inside. Better get one now, Gladys. You know Speedy. That's Speedy. <laughs> All right, I'll go over and buy the hot dog. You kids wait here so you won't get lost, huh? Hey, mister, four hot dogs, please. Yes, sir. Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. Just the way you like them and they're all red top. <laughs> Whoa, puppy, it's coming up. <laughs> How, uh... How, uh... How much are they? Uh, three cents a piece. Three cents? Uh-huh. Why do you sell them so cheap? Taste them. <laughs> oh, say, do they look... They, they do look like pretty tough weenies. Tough! Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> what suitcase handles they would make? <laughs> They still look good to me. Give me four. Uh, what kind of mustard do you want on them? What kind? Well, I got strong, mild, and Christmas night. <laughs> oh, mild, I guess. Okay, here you are. Four hot dogs covered with mild mustard. Thanks. Gee, they're kind of messy. Haven't you got some rolls to put them in? With rolls, it's five cents. With pickles, it's ten cents. With relish, it's 15 cents. And with bicarbonate of soda, you couldn't afford it. <laughs> Well, just give me the roll. Here you are. Here you are. Thank you. Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top, just the way you like them in the roll. Yeah. Here you are, kids. Take your hot dog. Thanks. Gee, I'm thirsty. What are we going to drink with our hot dog? Here you are, Gladys. Put that back in your pocket. <laughs> Now, let's go in. Stubbs, please. Let's see the numbers on your stubs. Here you are. Right this way. Just follow me. At... Oh, hello, Gladys. Why, hello, Nick. How are things? Fine. I'm on parole now. <laughs> come on. Come on. Show us our seats. Hey, listen to the cheering section. These seats are okay, aren't they, kids? Yeah, right on the 40-yard line. Hey, Jackson, care to make a little bet on the game? Okay, Phil, you take Alabama, I'll take USC. Hiya, pal. 
Uh, let's see, take it, no pal, no pal. Oh, great. Look, mister, how about sitting someplace else? No, thanks. I never touch it. <laughs> This would happen to me. How much do you want to bet, Jackson? How much do? Any amount you say, brother. Just name it. Okay, 50 bucks. $50? Okay, it's a bet. We must be sitting higher than I thought. <laughs> Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Peanuts, popcorn, chewing gum, peanuts, popcorn. Hello, Gladys, chewing gum. <laughs> oh, hello, Lizen. I'm going to say, Gladys, must you say hello? Quiet, quiet. I don't want to hear the game. The game hasn't started yet. No, thanks. I never touch it. <laughs> Gee, they're a husky bunch of fellas. Yeah, listen to that crowd. Here they come running right past us. Hello, Gladys! Gladys? Gladys? <laughs> now, look, I... Well, Speedy, dear, the boys on the USC team always eat at the drive-in. They voted me Miss Pigskin of 1945. <laughs> I don't care what they voted you. Gosh, what a crowd. Yeah, I'll bet there's 90,000 people here. Oh, that's terrible. 90,000 people without a home. <laughs> what are you talking about? This housing shortage is terrible. Look, they've got homes. They're here for the game. Oh, you're just saying that because I'm your pal. You're not my pal. I never saw you before in my life. No, thanks. I never touched it. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, run. Jackson, look, here comes the Alabama team. Hey, those Alabama fellas look pretty good, don't they, Gladys? They sure do. Hello, Gladys, you all! <laughs> Gladys, you all! That's the last straw. I'm leaving. I'm not even going to stay and see the game. And let me tell you something else, Gladys. You and I are through. Our engagement is broken. Goodbye. But, Speedy, if you're breaking our engagement, what about the ring? I'm not giving it back to you. <laughs> Goodbye. So there you are, Don. That's exactly what happened at the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, three weeks from tonight on January 27th, we will announce the winners of the I Can't Stand Jack Benny contest. Now, Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, L.A. Speedy Riggs. What do auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, men who know tobacco best, say about Lucky Strike? Well, just listen to the words of Mr. Thomas Jefferson Green, independent tobacco auctioneer of Walnut Cove, North Carolina. He said, For many years, I've noticed that at the different markets where I've been auctioneering... Lucky Strike has bought tobacco that was ripe and mild. So for my own cigarette, naturally, I picked Lucky Strike. Been smoking them for 21 years. Independent tobacco experts like Mr. Green surely know that it takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, out of 49, American. And this is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S.M.F.T. L.S.M.F.T. L-S-M-F-T. A fact known the world over. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Mary, I wish you'd stop telling Don everything that happens to me. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I won't do it again. Okay. Say, Mary, how would you like to go out to dinner now? And later we'll go dancing. No, not while you're wearing Gladys's ring. Well, I can't get it off. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.